Let's uh, also welcome on board Andrew Ferris and talk talk about uh, what's happening with global markets and what explains the weakness that one saw overnight and the big fall that we saw across the board. Be it Dow Jones, which uh, fell about 2% overnight, the S&P 500 index as well, which saw a dip of 2% coming in, NASDAQ down 1%, and even other markets like a FTSE, DAX, CAC, about a 2.5% fall coming in across the board, or for that matter, some of the emerging markets like Brazilian Bovespa, which was down about one and a quarter percent as well. Andrew, hi, good morning. Uh, great to have you on ET now once again. What explains this big shake off globally and, you know, not just for equity markets, but even the commodity markets with the crude dip of about almost 6% coming in? Are markets falling under their own weight or is there uh, a big fear with regards to the Delta variant now? Uh, it's terribly simple, actually. If we go back very briefly to March uh, year 20, when the markets woke up that we had in our hands a colossal medical problem and the markets absolutely collapsed. You remember March 20? Absolute huge slaughter. Now, the same thing is uh, repeated in a minor way in the sense that um, people tend to forget that the COVID hasn't gone away. India most definitely remembered it back in May and uh, a lot of other countries are going to remember it now, including the foolish Britons that are removing all precautions to the wind. And that thing is going to be with us. The notion that the vaccination uptake is, is big is a complete nonsense. In Asia, we are pitifully under-vaccinated. Hong Kong has got a, a double jab rate of uh, about uh, 22%. Uh, China has got uh, 15%. Uh, Singapore is 38% and Japan is even less. It's about 10%. It is really, really, really very poor. So all this is going to impact the markets. There's no way of going around this. Hello? How steep could the correction be, Andrew? You know, that's the, the other big question. Is it just a knee-jerk reaction that we saw overnight? Because we were chatting with the technical analyst at CLSA, Lawrence Belanco, earlier uh, today, and he foresees a 10% slide coming in for U.S. equity markets. Could the fall be as sharp or closer to what we saw in uh, March 2020, according to you? Well, no, because this is simply an additional reaction. The March one was a complete surprise of what was happening in the world. Okay, whereas uh, uh, in uh, this particular case, it's just the realization it hasn't gone away. So I don't foresee at all uh, such a steep decline. Andrew, so the drop in yield which has happened in last three weeks. Is that an indication that bond markets are telling us that 2022 will be a significantly slow growth patch for the world? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the notion that uh, we are clear, we are not clear. And I'm afraid the, the virus affects directly all policy making, including lockdowns uh, and so on. And uh, this, this, is, this, is, this is not going away. I'm not a doctor. All I read is I read the infections. I read the incredibly poor vaccination uptakes and uh, the, the, the numbers speak for themselves. So, yes, the idea is that uh, we are now uh, expanding rapidly. Uh, we may very hill hit the, the brick wall. So then what comes next? If growth comes down, that means interest rates will remain low and central banks are, uh, bankers are likely to follow a loose monetary policy. So are we in a repeat of what we saw, let's say, in 2020? Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there is no way that central banks are going to, to concede uh, uh, increasing interest rates anytime soon. Okay. So one is looking at investing in this world where we know growth is slowing down. Where should one park money? Uh, unfortunately, what the market uh, reacted initially, which was uh, the return back to U.S. dollar, uh, equity, US dollar uh, bonds, okay, was, uh, was, was, uh, was, was a fair reaction. So I'm afraid the fixed income is, uh, is going to be uh, possibly the, the area of interest as opposed to equities.
Sure. Andrew, what's the big concern besides uh, the Delta variant? Is it also the big dampener that we could see um, in terms of global growth? On the other hand, though, we were just chatting with a couple of experts earlier today that also sort of arrests uh, the big concern on inflation. In fact, uh, one of them was, uh, you know, indicating that the world may be headed towards stagflation and not really inflation, which was the concern up until, uh, you know, last week and what the central bank action thereof could be? Well, the inflation fear, uh, I think it is uh, slightly overrated because when one examines the individual sectors that have pushed prices up, this was not the kind of, uh, uh, let's say, excess demand coming out as opposed to still constraints in supply. So I have a great degree of sympathy of what uh, the Fed has been trying to uh, to say and do. And uh, in the same way, we are going to have uh, a, a similar uh, reaction with the European Central Bank uh, that uh, they are meeting actually this Thursday. So what is your view on how um central bank action is going to move at a time when sure enough if the de delta variant is going to worsen from here uh, it's going to definitely put a spanner in the works to the global recovery that we are seeing well there, there are two ways of looking at that uh, we, we, can, we cannot have it both ways at uh, 10 days ago we were the markets were uh, consistently concerned over the possibility of inflation accelerating permanently, as opposed to accelerating temporarily, as most of the central banks were pointing out. And now suddenly, 10 days later, we're finding out that there are fears about growth and therefore about inflation. And the reaction is, is of course, uh, for interest rates to fall, not to increase. So the spanner in the works is not going to be really a spanner because the central banks have been saying we're not going to increase the central banks, at least uh, Jap the Japanese central bank, bank, the central bank of Japan, the European central bank, which I suspect is going to do the same now on Thursday. And the Fed that has been saying we're not increasing interest rates anytime soon. So I don't think that's a spanner in the works in a sense. It is uh, simply saying that what we were concerned about inflation uh, has now come home to roost, but in a different way. So for a traditional uh, investor who has always said, I'm buying equities because interest rates are low. I'm buying equities because central bankers are printing money. I'm buying stocks because there is liquidity in the world. The big picture argument stays. So can I say that equities are unlikely to fall, not because of earnings or valuation, but because of cheap money? Uh, no, sorry, the markets have been very, very consistent. <laughs> Remember, interest rates fell because people moved away from equities. Okay, In other words, because they wanted a, a sort of a safe haven. And also, on the more or less guaranteed that the central banks were not going to increase interest rates and therefore push the prices down. So the decline in equities was, was perfectly consistent. It is not a matter that I am going to buy equities because interest rates are low. Actually, I'm not buying equities because interest rates are coming down because I'm concerned about equities and therefore I'm going into bonds. Uh, you know, we, we, we reverse the dog chasing its own tail. OK, the tail is now chasing the dog. So uh, the markets were not at all inconsistent. What is upsetting is, of course, the change in the views that happened within a period of, uh, of, of 10 days. Now, 10 days ago, we were concerned about inflation. Right now, we're not concerned about inflation. We're concerned that uh, possibly global uh, economy has reached the peak much uh, earlier than we thought it would. But Andrew, so if I look at hard time, data, which is what has happened Please go ahead. I'm sorry? Now, you wanted to finish your point. Yeah, 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 I did. I just did. I just did. I said, uh, I'm, I'm telling my clients to be, to, be, to be concerned and to be very careful on equities. Uh, my, uh, if, if I wanted to give you one single item, what I'm telling my clients now is not to watch price earnings ratios or watch the relative strength indicator, watch vaccination rates. Unfortunately, this has been completely forgotten. 
you know, it's finished. Okay, we're, we're done now. I mean, we have to live with uh, with COVID. Well, you have to live in COVID. You live also with hundreds of thousands of deaths, uh, with complete disruption, social disruption, and this will not go away. So if a client comes and tells me what I would be looking at, I says, carry on looking at vaccination rates, double jabs, because single jab is, is useless. It is still pitifully low in Asia. It is doing significantly better in UK and in Europe and the United States. But that does not mean that the infections, as well as the mutation in the virus that uh, uh, negates previous vaccination rates, uh, uh, are telling us. We are living now in a very, very different world. You know, I'm not a doctor at all. I'm just an economist. And I'm looking at the facts that are actually affecting policy. And the facts that are affecting policy is not inflation. It is the COVID. <laughs> But Andrew, if one looks at the real data, which is the U.S. retail sales, U.S. unemployment, U.S. housing market, uh, all of them are showing signs of revival. Can things turn and reverse sharply? Uh, sharply, no, because the expectations are here. People know what is going on. But uh, can they stop? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, this business about the labor market in the States, the labor market in the States is nearly five to six million short of what it was before March uh, year 20. In other words, it hasn't really recovered all the, the unemployment. And of course, it has played havoc with short-term unemployment, with uh, unemployment distributed between different classes, and I'm sorry to say different races. So it's by no means over. You know, people simply look at the unemployment rate and they say, hey, you know, it's back sort of to about uh, 4%. So everything is fine. Everything is not fine. And uh, the Fed quietly knows that. But, of course, they cannot go out and say that the economy worsens because it doesn't. Also, of course, we have the huge, simple technical problem, and that is we're looking at percentages from a very low base. You know, of course, China's first quarter was 18% GDP, 18% GDP growth, wow. okay, year on year. And then, of course, the second quarter, okay, it was something like 8 to 9%. Yeah, of course, much lower. Oh, it's slowing down. No, it's not slowing down. It is moving from a slightly lower Okay, uh, uh, base point. Uh, wait to see what's going to happen when we have the second quarter of India. Remember, it happened during May, and we still don't have the number. It's going to be a devastation. And what am I going to be surprised about? That? Am I going to sell the market? Of course not. You know, things are not normal. They are not normal. Okay. Andrew, we'll leave it at that. Great to have you on board and chat with us about the state of the global markets. So we're going to take a very quick break. 